All right, then uh, welcome back everyone. So in this video, let's solve this question. Ambitious kid. Let me read out the question for you. So, okay. Chanaka, Pak Chanak's child is an ambitious kid. So Pak Chanak gives her following problem to test her ambition. Okay, so there's a problem. Given an array of integers, A1, A2, A3, so on, A, and so basically we are given an array. Given operation, Chanaka can choose one element, then increase or decrease the element value by one. So the operation is either increment the value or decrement the value by one. Seneca can do that operation multiple number of times, even for different elements. So basically, at a time, just pick any random element from the array and either increment it by one or decrement it by one. What is the minimum number of operations that must be done to make even into A2, so on, basically product of all the array elements to be zero, right? That's what it means. So the question is simple, I guess. We have an array, even to an. An operation is defined, either increment or decrement any array element's value. And this operation can be done multiple number of times for different number of elements. What are the minimum number of operations that must be done such that the product of all the array elements uh, is zero? Input, like first line, so here I guess there is no test case input. So first line contains single integer n and second line contains n integers, a1, a2, a3, so on till an. Fine, so output, just an integer represents minimum number of operations that must be done so such that the product of all the array elements becomes zero. So that's that. So, yeah, so basically we want to make product of all the array elements to be zero. What is the minimum number of operations that can be done? And their elements can be positive and negative both. All right, so let's try to make some observations. Like since it's a, since it is a A-rated question, it'll be a very easy one. So one simple observation is if zero is part of the array, you don't need to do any operations, right? So you can see here, if zero is part of the array, we need not do any operations. It's one simple observation. If zero is not part of the array, then what? Mm, then we'll see. If zero is not part of the array, what do we have to do? So let me just to see here. So this is the array, basically, 2 minus 6, 5. See, you want to basically make product of all the array elements 0, right? So basically, I want a1 into a2 into a3 to be 0. Now this will happen, uh, like, when can this happen, first of all? At least one of them, at least one of a1, a2, a3 has to be 0, right? And uh, frankly, it's very easy to see. You just need to convert... Uh, we just need to convert uh, one of them to be zero. Why do you want to like? Because we want to minimize the operation, right? We want to minimize the operations. In an operation, you can uh, basically either increment it by one or decrement it by one. But we want to actually minimize those operations. So it makes sense. Just make one element to be zero. Which element? Now, if you have, like, it's a very easy observation again. The element closest to zero on the number line should be your answer, right? So here, two is closest to zero. Let's perform two operations and make it zero. Right, so I guess the answer would be, okay, answer would be 2 only. Here, again, you can, over here it's uh, 0 only, but for example, here you can say there is only one error element, minus 3. Since 0 is not part of the array, and you want the product of all the error elements to be 0, I guess array size is at least 1, yeah. And you need to convert one element to 0. That is the mean idea, right? So basically, our aim is, okay, why I keep opening OBS. Anyway, the aim is make one element to be 0. Which element should it be? It should be the one which is actually closest to zero, right? It's a simple observation because it will minimize the operations. Because our entire job is to minimize the operations. So I guess that's the algorithm basically. So what you can do is basically you um, can just uh, check how many operations does it take to make every element of the array zero, and one which is closest to zero will automatically be, be our answer. So basically, what I'm saying is, uh, let's just take the array input first of all. So it's very easy. We are just going to go through every element of the array and try to see what number of operations are consumed to turn this element to zero, and we are just going to minimize it, basically, right? Cool. Let me just take the input quickly. Or in type of zero, I just in and in plus plus c in array of i. So I want to basically minimize minimize these operations. So initially, let's say uh, operations are very high, a very big number. You can maybe take in packs also. Then I'm going to go through all the elements. Okay and try to convert this element to zero. We are like, we are sure that we have to convert at least one element into zero. And it's better, since we want to minimize the operation, convert just one element into zero. And which element it should be? It should be the one which is closest to zero. So just go through every array element and try to make it zero, basically. So what operations are going to be consumed here? Basically, you want to do something like, you want to minimize the operation. You know, operations and operations consumed to convert area of i into zero. So what, how many operations will be consumed to convert area of i into zero? It will be basically absolute of area of i minus zero, right? 
So one business is uh, we are initializing operations to very big values. Initially, we are assuming we need a lot of operations. And that every iteration, what you are doing is I am going to try to convert a given array element into zero. We will try to minimize this. So basically, after this loop ends, operations uh, will have uh, operations will store the minimum, minimum number of operations required. That's that. So we can just print it. See what operations? Uh, maybe new line, right? Yeah, cool. Let's just see. Okay, I'm taking the input correctly, right? So then fine, no issues. So yeah, that is that. So this question is very simple. Actually, we just need to go through each and every error element and find out how many operations are required to convert this into zero. And what is that operations? There's a difference between that element and the absolute difference between zero and that element. Simple. So basically, if you want to make minus x to zero, you just need to make the absolute difference between minus x and zero. So yeah, this question doesn't have much substance to it. Let me just quickly submit it and see if it gets submitted. Okay. Right. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, it works. All right, then uh, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.